And lastly, I want to talk about how to answer probability questions. And this is specific to this class. So as you go forward and have to do probabilities in other classes, other assignments, other teachers, you know, definitely find out how they want it answered. But every time we have a probability question, I always want it listed as a percent, and I want you to list one place to the right of the decimal. And I want to be sure that everyone knows how to do that. Most of you should, but it comes up enough times that we should go over it. Um, keep in mind to do that. If you're ever given a fraction, you'll need to convert that to a decimal to be able to do it, and we'll do an example of that. Um, the way that you change to a percent is you move the decimal two places to the right and focus that it's on the right. And of course, all percent questions are going to need to have a percent symbol at the end so I know that it's been converted. So I give an example here. If I had a probability and I calculated it to be 0 0.14623, then I would take that decimal and move it one, two places so that it's in between the four and the six, but then I have to decide how I'm gonna round. So I'm keeping a, a number, a position after the decimal, so then it's actually two places after the decimal, that's an arrow if you can tell, that's telling me how to round. And because I have a two, which is not a five or larger, that means my six is left untouched and my final answer is 14 point, whoops, wrong pen. My final answer is 14.6. So now let's go ahead and do a couple together. So for problem one, imagine that you calculate the probability 0.5319. Go ahead and try to convert that. Okay, if I was doing it, first thing I would do is move the decimal two places to the right. So now I'd have 53.19. Then the first digit after the decimal, the one, I'd have to decide, does it stay a one or does it round up? Because it's a nine afterwards, which is a five or larger, it is gonna round up from a one to a two and I'll end up with 53.2%. Now let's go ahead and look at problem two. I have the fraction two-thirds. Let me have you convert that to a percentage. Okay, so first thing you should have done is change your fraction to a decimal. Just get out your calculator and hit two divided by three if you don't have it memorized. And it's, you know, six, 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 six off the edge of your calculator. Move your decimal two places over, so in between the second and third sixes. Decide if your first digit after the decimal stays a six or it rounds up. Because of the very last far right six, my second to last six is gonna round up. And I'll get 67 point, sorry, 66.7%. Okay, problem three, point 0.79, that last digit's a nine. Convert that to a percent with one place to the right of the decimal. Okay, so what happens when you move the decimal two places over, that's it, you're done. There is no spot after the decimal to decide whether it rounds up or not. You're just gonna get 79%. And for your last problem, oops, oh sorry. Also that one, because my directions always say to answer one place to the right of the decimal, some students feel more comfortable by putting that digit after the decimal, and in which case it would be appropriate to put a zero but I don't require that. And for the last one, point 0.2. Okay, so when you move it two places to the right, your decimal that is, you end up with 20 point nothing and just 20%. And lastly, in terms of writing probabilities, sometimes as you go to calculate it, um, you'll find that your calculator gives you scientific notation. So I just want to make sure everybody remembers how to read scientific notation. So in this first problem where I have 3.5 times 10 to the fourth, hopefully you remember that means to move your decimal four places to the right. So for example, oh, the reason we do it is keep in mind four is positive, four is the exponent. So whatever sign the exponent is, that's what tells you which direction to move. So what I would do is I would take the 3.5, move my decimal one, two, three, four places to the right, 
and then I need to fill in zeros past those blank spots, and I'll end up with 35,000. So for problem two, I'm given 1.67 times 10 to the negative three. So this means I'm going to move the decimal three places to the left because the three was a negative number. I'm moving to the left. The exponent was negative. So now I take the original number 1.67 and I need to move that decimal three places to the left. Again, I need to put zeros where the blanks were. And my final answer is 0 .00167. And then one last thing that you might see in terms of calculator scientific notation is this 1.67e negative seven. The e stands for exponent. So this is really just telling you 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh. So my suggestion to you is go ahead and get your calculator out and enter one divided by five million. By doing that, you'll get to see how your calculator shows scientific notation. And I suggest you write it here. For me personally, I use a TI-83 plus and my calculator showed 2e negative 7.